they make that sound when they're really stressed. On this episode... Underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him. We do get ticks on koalas and dingoes, but not like this, it's crazy. He can quite easily die from these ticks, because each one of them is taking just a little bit of blood. I and most of the guys here would rather cop a whack from the King Brown yeah. than one of these, you know. The pain is just said to be unbelievable. Yeah. One slip, that spur goes in, we're in big trouble. But first... So I'd say she has actually been hit by a car, looking at that. All of the body is recovering, mm. apart from that one area. Oh no. I have got my concerns for her nerve function. There is a risk that we may do some more damage. It's bloody hard. Rebecca. Okay, two Rebecca's. How are you going, Chris? I'll get here as soon as I can. How are you going, Chris? We were just having some champagne with some clients and serving some customers, and this dog just ran in through my back door and just pretty much collapsed at my feet. We just got out of my car and she took off down the side gate. And then I called her back and she came, but screaming. I didn't hear a screeching of um, tyres or anything like that. I just sort of heard her screeching. Actually, she's got the black running through here as well. Yeah. So I'd say she has actually been, been hit by a car, looking oh. at that. All right. OK, she's got some deep pain sensation. Sorry, 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 sorry. So she can actually sense that there, which is good. For me, what I'm feeling the most is around her, her pelvis. I bend up her, her femur on her left side, I bend it up, it feels fine. Yeah. It's just when I start to, to really move that joint around around her pelvis, that's when she responds. She's very loving and she is very bossy, but she's amazing. I love her to bits. I'm sorry. Hey, Willow. Oh, no, buddy. Sorry. Hey, Willow, I'm sorry. Hey, hey puppy. It's all right. So I'm just not sure what's happening with those hips at this stage. There seems to be two major areas that she's been, been hit and, and suffered trauma at. One is obviously around the face and the neck there. The other one is around the, the hip area. So thankfully, at the moment anyway, it looks like she's escaped any, any damage in where the areas where the vital organs are, around the, the thorax and the abdomen, because she didn't have any air in, in her chest, which usually indicates severe trauma. Um, didn't have any blood in her abdomen, which once again indicates trauma in that area. So, you know, as much as you don't want any damage anywhere, she's got damage around the front end and the back end, and left the things that can kill her quickly alone. Could you, with your yeah. actual working hand there, can you put pressure on? Actually, just just hold it there. It's, it's a nice low rate at the moment, um, and I'll um, I'll just see if I've got anything stronger for the pain. I wouldn't mind even just slightly sedating her for the trip, just because she is so sore. Yeah. We had a, something wrapped around her muzzle to begin with, but later on she came off and she turned around and got me by the hand, so she's got a couple of teeth right through my thumb there. Willow's not a, a savage dog. She's just snapping because she's in so much pain. So this is just going to provide some pain relief, but also just mildly sedate her, just so she's a bit more comfortable for this trip should make her feel a lot more comfortable. And just relax her, because in many ways, she's her own worst enemy. The more she, she struggles, the more demands for oxygen she puts on her system. Um, and right now, she's, she's struggling as it is without her stress combining to, to make her a pretty bad mix. All right, she's just looking a bit more relaxed there. Yeah, she's yeah. Mm. So I might get all my gear together, bring the car around, and then we'll get her. Roll her onto here. Yeah, yeah. 
which will be a challenge. Still got four fingers left on that hand, we can use that. So now comes the tricky part. It's alright, I'll take the front end. That's alright, I'll... So, even though we've given her that medication, it still hasn't really slowed her down too much. Um, we're in a tricky situation because we just can't sedate her too much, otherwise it's going to affect her, her blood pressure. The cruel part is that I've got to get her up just to get her back to the clinic so we can x-ray her. It's gonna hurt the most, I know Willow, that's all right. She's not gonna like it, I don't wanna put her through that, but we just have to work out what's happened when that car hit her. Actually, I'll carry her. Yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. She um, she's willing to sit up now. I think that's the pain relief that's doing that. Collapse now. <laughs> You're just doing exactly opposite of what I say to do, aren't you? <laughs> I want you to lie down. You sit up. When I want you to sit up, you lie down. See how we go without the muzzle for the time being. A bit more comfortable, are you? The drugs have kicked in. There you go. That's better, isn't it? That's the willow we like. Okay, so you can see the gum colours a lot more pink than it was before. Let's just have a listen here. My feeling is that those medications we gave her, the, the anti-inflammatory and also the pain relief, it's, it's limited any, any bleeding, any bruising, so she's feeling a lot more comfortable. The breath sounds are better. What I'll do now though is, is just give her something via a catheter. It's just a stronger pain relief. Mm -hmm because what I'd like to do is, is really x-ray those back legs to see what, what's going on there. Might actually just put some oxygen on her. That'll just relax her. Now, could you actually hold that on there for her? Is that right? Okay, so we'll give her this stronger pain relief. Hopefully that'll then relax her to the point where we can actually x-ray her. Because as you can imagine, keeping it still while we're trying to have a look at all those joints, and especially a spine, is going to be quite difficult. So she'll feel a little bit sleepy, but she shouldn't be totally out to it. The idea is just to relax her rather than fully sedate her or anesthetize her. <laughs> I, I really don't know what I'm going to see here, and that's, I guess, the importance of this x-ray is that any number of things could be going on here. What we do know, though, is that Willow is incredibly sore around there, and it's a source of incredible discomfort, but also she's not really detecting pain in that back leg as well. Now, is that shock or is that actually severe damage and is it in the spinal cord? If, if so, we've got a problem. Next try. From what I can tell, and I can only tell from the bone itself, there doesn't look to be any um, fractures that could, could really threaten the spinal cord there. Right. Her hips, from what I can see from side on, they're in place. Yeah. So I can't see any dislocations there or any fractures. But to truly know, we're gonna actually need to take a shot from above. Okay. And that'll give us a better look at her spinal cord too. It's gonna hurt a little bit. I'm sorry about to put it through that, but just to get the answers we need, there's just no other way. You can see this spinal area is okay, but when we get to here, there is an issue. She's got fractured ribs. 
fractured ribs are extremely painful, but we don't go in and operate on those. No. They will actually heal themselves. Darling, relax. Big mystery is working out what it is, and and I, jeez, I, I would have had my money on on a broken leg or a fractured yeah. pelvis. I think when I get home, I'll probably need a stiff drink. And then I think I'll probably get a good night's sleep because I know that she's in good hands. Oh my God, she's everything to me, you know. She's my best friend. Look, I'd love to think that tomorrow morning she's going to be much improved, more relaxed, more comfortable and more mobile. But I've got a sinking feeling that's not going to be the case. Oh, it's my buddy. It's my buddy. There you go. Mm. See you, Willow. Hi. Okay, thanks for coming and seeing her. She's, look, she's doing okay. Yeah. Um, certainly she's happier in herself, but for me right now, the, the worry is whether her body's that much happier. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Hi, sweetie. You're much better today, aren't you? Oh. Yes, it's all right. Oh, I know. She's certainly yeah. happier, but yeah. the issue I have is that she's not still not able to stand. Yes. Yeah. And this leg is the problem here. So she's got feeling, you know. I'll yeah. Show you. Yes. She's got good reflexes there. <laughs> so she's got nerve function yeah. going down here. Do you think that she's torn something or? Yeah. Or I, I, bruised maybe. I think with the impact from that car. Yeah. I think it's it's probably a little bit bigger than than we thought. Good girl. Wow, it's really... All of the body is recovering, mm. apart from that one area, that one very critical area, which are these back legs. Oh, you're really trying, aren't you? I couldn't imagine my life without her, actually. Yeah. All right. The x-rays are trying to tell me that Willow doesn't have any fractures of those back legs or the hips, but she's in so much pain that I'm not convinced. Just a couple of shots, good. X-ray. Well, let's have a look. So she's got a fractured pelvis. You can see it there, that bone's lifting right off. Now, that's the old one there, taken on the day of the accident with just no sign of any fracture at all. But what's probably happened is she's had a hairline crack here and then the muscles have just forced it apart and leave it open just like that. So this is gonna be an extremely tricky fracture to fix. Willow's gonna to need to go and see Andrew Marchevsky at SASH. It's an extremely painful procedure especially when she's already been through so much. I'm just really worried, you know, being sort of feeling guilty and sad, angry, <laughs> you know. That's what's sort of worrying me, that she's not going to be able to run with her dog mates and trying to be strong for both of us. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be fine, you'll be brave. You'll be brave too. Thanks, Chris, right. I really appreciate Stay it. Strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. bye. See you later. See you, Willow. Say bye, Willow. It's hard not to feel a huge amount of sympathy towards Willow. She's been through the horror of a car accident and now she faces another ordeal. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a painful operation. There's going to be a long recovery. So it's hard on her, but it's also hard on Beck. And Beck's putting up a pretty brave front at the moment, but I know deep down she's hurting. How are you going? Hello. I'm Andrew. Nice Manchester. to meet you, Rebecca. Rebecca, how are you? This is Willow. Hello, Willow. Have you been in the wars, mate? Hey, are you a bit sore? 
Yes. I'm not surprised. I've had a look at your x-rays. These are you know, quite particularly nasty breaks. Uh, one of them's got gone right through the sacrum, which is the, the, basically the tail base, but it's probably gone through uh, very close to where one of the nerves is coming out, and I think that's where a lot of the pain's coming from. The other fracture's really, really displaced, and uh, it's, it's no wonder that she's not able to walk. And is that common for it not to show up for a few days? Because the, the x-ray the, on Saturday was perfect. Yeah. Like it, just it can, because what can happen is you get a fracture and it doesn't yeah. actually separate. Right. It's just like a crack. Right. And then as she starts moving around, because it's not supported, it, it separates. And that's, I think with her, it's, it, it's happened on both sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's certainly not unheard of. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's good that Chris looked at it again and said, well, hang on, let's start again and find yeah. out. So, so um, with that, I think both of those parts of the pelvis are going to need to be repaired right. to give her the best chance of getting up as yeah. quickly as possible. We just need to get this done. Like, there's no doubt about it. You know, I want her up and walking around straight away, you know, and if this is the way, what we have to do to get there, then so be it. But um, like you said, the brakes seem quite clean and straightforward, so I'm hoping that there's going to be no trouble in the operating room. And, and like I said, you know, she's a tough cookie and her heart's strong, so she'll be able to handle it. Come on, Will. You're all right. Are you? Yeah. Uh -oh. I have got my concerns for her nerve function and I know she's got some um, and it's pretty good but we don't know how much damage has been done to the nerve and how much improvement she'll get. There is a risk that we may do some more damage but the chances of her not being able to walk again are much greater if we do nothing. Okay, good girl. Bye Willow. Go, Shook. Now you can tell us. Now you can tell us. The pelvis is a very difficult area to get a really good picture of what the fractures look like. So with a CT, we'll know exactly what the fractures look like. So this is a 3D reconstruction of the CT scan. What's interesting is that this is the fracture going up through there. And so this part is fractured away from that. Um, that's the other side and that's quite normal. That'll be our challenge for today. We'll sweat over this one, getting it back in the right spot. The screw's a little high, you can end up in the spinal canal and damage the nerves that go through there. And if it's too low, you don't get enough bone and it's not secure enough. I'll just come your side. Thanks. I'm not at all surprised that this is being problematic. She's a really big dog and there's a lot of swelling and they're just tough fractures. It's bloody hard. That one we only needed to get two screws in and that was hard enough. This one we're gonna have to get eight or nine. Got him, right on, bang on. Uh, well, we've got all the screws in. I'm just doing a last minute tighten to make sure they're all nice and tight. Then we've got to close and take some x-rays and then we're done. It was difficult to get the fractures back together. Um, ultimately, we got it really nice, but it took a long time. Ah. Pretty sure she got really 
year ended. Right. She just got smacked. And yet, when she arms. came running back to me, I thought that she'd gone into a fight with a cat because she had a, a graze across her. Well, <laughs> if only. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, I wish. As a jaguar. Yeah. Is, is the only cat that's dealt with her, I think. Hi, darling. Oh my God. Hi, sweetie. I was just like freaking out. I, I mean, you don't want to think the worst, but. At the same time, you can't help it, you know? You just think, well, what's taking so long? This should have been over, you know? We've got her through this part of it, but there's a long recuperative period. You know, if this is a human, you'd be in a wheelchair for six or eight weeks and doing physio, so Beck's going to have to do a lot of hard work now as well. Oh, man. A week ago, if someone had told me that this is what I'd be going through, I would never have believed it. She's been so brave, haven't you, darling? Good girl. Yes, your mummy's here. Yes, she is. Yes, it's time to go home. Hey, come on. Just getting her home. How am I going to cope? That's a good dog. Oh, here she comes. Look at you. Is that your mum? Hi, <laughs> sweetie. Look at that. Hello, my girl. For the next two weeks, it's a that. towel is your friend. Okay. Um, I don't want her walking anywhere without it. No running or jumping for you, though. No. I think she's ready to come home. I think she misses her mum. <laughs> yes, I miss her. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good girl. Yes, hey, Willow. cheers, Willow. Cheers. <laughs> You're a bit left out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you could all be <laughs> Well, oh, look at you go. Wow. Yes, we've been through hell, but it's okay. <laughs> I can't believe this yeah, is the same It's just an incredible difference from where she was on that awful day where she was in such serious pain to now where she's walking beautifully. It's really impressive for you. <laughs> These are the sort of endings that I do my job for. Girl. Looks like we've got to make a bit of a detour. The Australian Reptile Parks is called. They've got a critically ill animal. It sounds like it needs urgent attention. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you? Tim will be happy to see you come straight through. He's got a platypus. He does. It was found this morning. It's unbelievable. Really? Hi, mate. Hey, Tim. How are you, buddy? Yeah, good. Thank you. Did you never cease to surprise me? <laughs> no, check this out. A little male platypus. He's not real well. Jeez, his eyes are sunk, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, he is. his fur's all matted, he's dehydrated. My guess is that he's a young male, he's been kicked out by a territorial male, and he's just trodged through the bush. He's picked up all these ticks, and he turns up in suburbia. He's been really, really sluggish, but I've managed to get the ticks that I could off him, but I mean, he's got a heap in here around his cloaca that I just yeah. couldn't get to. And he's done a good job, though. There's yeah. plenty there. Well, this morning he was hardly moving, and I don't know if that's relation to these, but he's, he's sort of got a bit of energy back. Yeah. You got a name for him? Oh, look, well, between a few of us, we wanted to call him Aussie because he's a little battler at the moment. The thing that really stands out to me is just how skinny he is. I mean, yeah. normally platypuses, they're so plump. Yeah. And, and you know, almost cylindrical just in their, in their shape. But he's, you can really see individual little you know, bones almost poking through the skin there. And his eyes, I mean, you can't even see them. I mean, the general way to measure their weight and the way that we know how they are in captivity is by the tail. And if we do that, we have an index from one to five. One being obese, five being very, very skinny. Yeah. And that little guy's tail folds in half. Yeah. So that's like a six, you know. Our, our plats here, they sort of, you'd only get half of it. And yeah. They're a good weight, but I mean, look, it doesn't even fold back. It just stays as it is. Yeah. 20, 30 right there. My worry is that he's got 40 or so ticks in that container. He's probably got another, at least 40 on him there. Yeah. If each of those has, say, half a mil yep. of blood, even a quarter of a mil, that's 10 mils of blood. Yeah. He's got to be severely anemic as it is. Yeah. Underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him. I've never seen anything with this many ticks. Um, I mean, he's in pretty poor condition, and we do get ticks on koalas and dingoes, and we treat them, but not like this. It's crazy. What am I do just to 
I guess there's a bit of insurance against him going to shock himself and, and not really handling this whole experience. Actually give him some fluids now. That should help his blood pressure straight away. Has he tried to use his spurs yet? No, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're still there. Yeah. And um, they're quite large still for a young plat, but... Jeez, they are decent, aren't they? As the minutes tick by, he's becoming more and more stressed by the whole situation, so we've got to get the ticks off quickly, but pay a lot of attention to that spur. It's a venom, but it's got like something like 200 different ingredients. It's, it's a really complicated substance, and scientists try to, to study it, and they're, they're always baffled as to, to you know, why it's there. These guys have no predators, so it's not to defend themselves against their enemies. Um, it's not to not use to actually catch their food, because they catch little crustaceans and then little worms. So the only conclusion they can draw is that it's used for territorial defence, so you're actually fighting off other platypus. I and most of the guys here would rather cop a whack from a King Brown yeah. than one of these, you know. The pain is just said to be unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing, everyone just assumes they're just so yeah. cute and cuddly. Yeah. And they're cute, but they've got a pretty nasty little yeah. surprise waiting for you, haven't they? It's only when you really part the fur, you realise just how many there are. It's like having open wounds all over his body. The fact is, he can quite easily die from these ticks, because each one of them is taking just a little bit of blood, and that could be enough to kill him. Jeez. It's important to realise that these aren't paralysis ticks. There is more than one type of tick, and these are actually called bush ticks. So what they do is they just suck blood. Tim and I just have to be so careful when we take these ticks off to do it the right way and not pop those spurs. One careless moment, one slip, if that spur goes in, we're in big trouble. I thought I saw one just... Oh, there. it's more, down yeah. the tail. Just two, two there. And then there. No, just missed him just here. Yeah, get out of it, mate. I'm about to fall no, over. No, it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a bit lower. A bit lower, just there. Yeah, what about down here? No, no. What's get right? out of it. There's no ticks there. We've already got them. It's the quietest you've ever been. Yeah, <laughs> not full of hot air anymore. <laughs> I really am going to fall over. Though. <laughs> There's heaps more down at his tail. The reason platypus are so special, they're ju just their uniqueness. Um, it's typical of Australian animals, but they're mammals that lay eggs, like a reptile. They've got a duck bill, a beaver tail, these webbed feet. It's just the bizarrest thing. They incubate an egg. You know, they feed underwater. It's, it's an animal, it's just, um, it's out of this world. And there's only the platypus and the echidna that are monotreme, so really bizarre. Listen to that. They don't very often make a noise. No. That's almost the emergency beacon for them. They, they make that sound when they're really stressed. His natural environment is water. He's going to eat when he's in water, so the sooner we can get him there and get him relaxing, the better. All right, now he doesn't look real good there, so I want to get him in nice and quick. Good. I'm just going to ease him down a bit. Here you go, mate. Let him see where he is. We'll just keep him isolated for the moment, you know, give him his own little tank and um, let him try and recuperate until he gets healthy. Looks good. He's hungry, isn't he? Yeah. Actually eating mealworms. Look at that. That little sonar of his is, is still working then. Look, there we go. Another one. That's a good food response. I mean, that's immediate. That's a good sign, mate, if he's already keen to take on some food. It's not over by a long way. You know, for him to be like that in my hands, then touch the water, it doesn't mean we're in the clear, you know. That's sort of his last ditched attempt to get some nutrition in, you know, but we, we've got a long way to go. You know, a lot of it's up to him. All we can provide is food, shelter, water. Um, you know, we can put all the elements there. He's got to have a good will to live. And here he is, our little Aussie battler. He's beaten all the odds. He had 80 blood-sucking ticks on him. He was on the road and avoided getting hit by a car. He walked all that way through the bush. And I tell you, if this bloke was human, he'd be selling his story to a magazine. 
Now as for his future, in captivity he's going to become very dependent upon us. So he might finish his days in a breeding program as an ambassador for his species. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way.